What's up, everybody, man? It's your host with the most. The, the Black Cat OG is in the building, man. Dub Q. I'd like to welcome you to Black Cat Panther Podcast, man. Hey, Q! You already see what time it is. The topic of the day is AR-15. And I am very excited to speak on this guy. I mean, to watch this guy in the combine, to watch this growth from Florida, where he had an interesting year where he was learning on the fly, where he has taken this time to really put in the work to get better. Physically, you see him look better. You see his throwing ability looks better. And man, I'm here to say that without a shadow of a doubt, Anthony Richardson is that guy, man. Make no mistake about it, man. We've seen a bevy of quarterbacks over the last decade or two, um, whether it's the RG3s, the uh, the Jameis Winstons, the Vince Youngs, the, uh, the, 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 the Jalen Hurts, the Cam Newtons, uh, Josh, the, the, what's the guy that was in Tampa Bay? His name was Josh. Uh, I can't remember his name off the back, but we've seen a bevy of the black running quarterbacks. And you know the, the 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 stigma that comes behind it is that they can't win. The stigma that comes behind it is that they don't read defenses or they have the ability where they can't lead a team. And I watched this guy yesterday. I watched how he made a guy like C.J. Stroud just seem small standing beside him, literally and figuratively. He he like I saw C.J. Stroud for once just deferring to Anthony Richardson being in the room right there beside him. That's how you know this guy has this thing called magnetism that pulls people to you. Like, it's just a vibe that you can feel off of him, which give off King vibes, man. Look, make no mistake about it. If the Carolina Panthers are picking at quarterback this year, I'm under the impression now, after seeing this guy make all the short passes, the long passes, the deep passes, the intermediate passes yesterday, this is the guy of the future. And I'm here to tell you guys, for everyone that said that he was a project and has to wait, not at all. I looked at him yesterday. This guy is no project. He knows exactly what he is doing. Uh, like he said, he's in the mode of where he can grow. He would like to play day one. Uh, and I'm going to be real with y'all. On our roster, there won't be a quarterback that can outplay him. Let's just be real. There will not be a quarterback that can outplay Anthony Richardson right now. Because if you saw him yesterday and he somewhat outplayed C.J. Stroud in the combine making throws, come on, man. And, and C.J. Stroud has been labeled God by a lot of people for the last couple of months. He's been labeled a God. And this guy has done nothing but put work to his craft. And he has come out physically in better shape. I mean, you can see it. You can see this guy. When he walk and move, he looked like a damn Superman walking. It, look, everything that points and leads to this guy says that he will have a higher ceiling. He will have a higher season. And he will be ready and a force to be reckoned with when he gets to the league. Now... He just needs a great coaching staff to back him, a la Frank Wright. I mean, you can't even ask for a better staff to bring this guy into to be able to learn and mold him into the quarterback. I always said, what would Cam Newton be if he had an offensive line in that Super Bowl as well as he had a defense? But if he had a number one receiver, just one true number one receiver, where when times got hard, he had one guy to bail him out, other than Greg Olson, this cat would have won that Super Bowl against the Broncos, man, because Von Miller would have been non-existent and he would have had throwing options. So that's on the Panthers from the past because we didn't supply our quarterbacks, our supermen, our superstars. We didn't supply them with what they needed to go forward. We never gave Cam Newton a full team or a full deck of cards. Out of 52 cards, we kept giving him 40, 41, or 42. We kept giving him short hands, and he had to go out there and play spades with a short hand. It's okay. This is what it has gotten us. It got us a banged up guy because we didn't give him the offensive line he needed. He ended up getting banged up. We didn't give him the weapons he needed. He didn't win the big Super Bowl like he was supposed to. 
and injuries ended up riddling him, and he ended up being out of the league and brought back later on after the fact. But it's like all the damage that's been done from not giving this guy a left tackle, from not going out and making sure he had a competent right right tackle play. You get you trade away his best guard and Trey Turner and send him to San Diego. I mean, Ryan Kalia retires. Wow. I mean, you, you you want this guy to be able to compete for Super Bowls. You have a superstar at quarterback. And he he was learning. He was learning what it means to play actual ball. And he had put that hero ball down. And he was learning what it means to play meaningful ball. AR-15 said it in his interview yesterday. He said, a lot of the times at Florida, I was playing hero ball because really I had to learn everything on the fly. So basically, the, co- the coaches... Let's make no mistake about it in Florida. That little high school offense that they were running in Florida was not helping him out whatsoever. And he had to get out there from week to week and play hero ball and learn things on his own. And finally, the light bulb clicked and he took off. So if you give this guy a competent coaching staff, which we think Frank Wright, uh, we think that Josh McCown, we think that uh, Thomas Brown, we think that those guys are very competent in getting this offense forward. I believe so. I know you guys do. You give this guy that bevy of coaches and you sit him in the room with him and all he has to do is soak this thing up with the raw talent and the ability that he has right now and a potential DJ Moore and a potential offensive line, potentially with a running back, and you go out and draft another receiver, and you get him a tight end, Carolina is going to be a force to be reckoned with for years to come. And I mean that. I mean, I potentially see us winning Super Bowls with Anthony Richardson at helm because this guy has the it factor. He can comp- Look, you give him two years, he'd be competing with Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts right now with the NFC and over the Lombardi Trophy. That's just how confident I am in this guy after watching him. He has the ability, and in the right place, he will flourish. And I believe that Carolina is the right fit for him because, like I said, we have everything. We can cater an offense to him, to what he does, to his strengths and and his weaknesses. You can cater to this guy, bring him in, allow him to be turned loose, and we can sit here and say, okay, DJ Moore, we know his numbers are going to go up. I mean, he's been playing with Sam Donald. He's been playing with Baker Mayfield. P.J. Walker, he'd be playing with potentially anybody off the street. So we know his numbers are going to go up. We know the offensive productivity is going to go up. We know with this guy, the running backs are going to have bigger lanes because Thomas Brown is a former running back, and he was a former tight tight ends coach. So he's going to run that damn ball if he don't do nothing else. He is going to run the football, which is going to open up a lot of playing ways for Anthony Richardson. And look, Across the field, he's going to need a tight end. Make sure you go and get this guy a weapon so that way he can be dangerous off the bat. There's no excuses for getting this young quarterback and not surrounding him with the pieces that he needs, essentially. You do that right now, immediately, and you have a contender here in Carolina for the years going forward. There's no need for him to sit on the bench. There's no need for him to uh, be brought in by a veteran. I'm looking at this cat. If you go and get him, there is no absolute need to hire a veteran and put him on the roster. I was saying before, you go get a, a veteran and you uh, start the veteran first and you groom him. It's no need. Looking at this cat yesterday, he's already there. There's nothing that a veteran can show him other than how to put his clothes up in the locker room. And I don't think he need anybody for that. Um, so let's just be real. Anthony Richardson is that guy. I feel the vibes. I feel the immense pressure of him trying to live up to be what he feel like he need to be. But this guy is also calm, cool, collected, poised. He, he, he says the right things. The mind frame seems to be very mature. You want a smart, thick quarterback that can move the chains. This guy is very aware of where he's at. I like listening to him talk. Like I said, I, I caught a couple of his interviews yesterday because I just wanted to see where his head was. Was he swelled up on his performances? And this guy was like, hey, it's right back to it. 
You know, I got a lot of room to grow. Yes, I did broke a couple of confine records today, but I have a lot of room to grow. And that's the stuff I like hearing. That's a that's a quarterback with humility who realizes that this is just the beginning. You are coming in as a rookie. Your head shouldn't be to the clouds. Like, I don't think Cam ever got that. Cam Newton's head was all the way to the cloud because he thought he was the best thing moving and smoking. Come on, bro. This is where I said the difference in AR-15 seems to be. He has bits and pieces from everybody and it's all put together in one unique person. And I like it. So, uh, man, this has been your boy, Doug Q. I like this right here. This is the first time that I've ever said who I specifically want to see now. And I'm putting it out there. Anthony Richardson, to me, is that guy. Quarterback, you do whatever you can, Scott Federer, to bring this guy on in. Um, I was going to say at nine, he was going to fall to us, but I'm not going to be naive enough to say that. We may have to trade up to get this guy. And I'm looking at the area. This might be the best quarterback in the draft, man. I think he slept on just that much. I think he's better than Bryce. I think he has more of an it factor than C.J. Stroud. Uh, just looking at him, like I said, the high upside, you can't overlook it. This guy is going to be a superstar. Mark my words for it. I said before, there are two quarterbacks in this draft that I thought that were going to be superstars outside of C.J. And, and Bryce. And that was going to be Anthony Richardson and Hendon Hooker. Both of those guys are going to be special. Just watch what I said. This has been your boy Dub Q, the Black Cat OG. We getting this thing up started and we going. Look, rock with me. AR-15 will be in the building. Two states, one team. That's all I got to say. Welcome to Carolina.